It has been way too long since I talked about one of the Xenoblade Chronicles games, and now that Pyro and Mithra have come to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, now seems like a good time to talk about these games again. So how about we rank them? And fun fact, I've already written this script before, but then something ha happened that made me scrap the old script and re-rank all these games, except for number 5. Second time's the charm, am I right? These games are mostly being ranked by how polished they are, the quality of the content, and just how I feel about the games. And after the video, tell me in the comments how you would rank these games. Well, I better get it started before anyone gets too bored. Let's get started with the one game in the series that has truly disappointed me, Xenoblade Chronicles Future Connected. On paper and in marketing, this game had me sold from the start. Exploring the Bionis shoulder and getting some more closure for Melia is a great place to start a game. However, it didn't really play out that way. I know what you're saying to yourself right now. Isn't this just part of Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition? And you are right to an extent. The reason that I'm categorizing Future Connected as its own game is because of the many differences in gameplay and story between the main game of Xenoblade Chronicles and Future Connected. And boy, those differences are what made this game so disappointing. Everyone besides Shulk and Melia gets either removed or replaced with Napon. Chain attacks have been replaced with less interesting and less satisfying pawn specters, and they removed the vision mechanic, one of my favorite mechanics in any video game, period. It also has music that just didn't really resonate with me very well. I'm sure that some people like the music in this game, but for me, it didn't feel as awesome as the music in the rest of the series. The story was okay, but like I said with the music, the story for this game doesn't hold a candle against the stories in the rest of the series. So yeah, Future Connected is the most disappointing game in the Xenoblade Chronicle series. That means it was bad. Well, not really. This small epilogue to the original game is more than most full-scale games come out with today. This game also was running on a good game engine, unlike Xenoblade 2, and despite how mad I may sound about this, Future Connected does get a little bit of slack. As it turns out, the primary reason this game turned out the way it did was because of Monolith Soft's upcoming game. It has been revealed that Monolith Soft wasn't able to give more development to this game because doing so could potentially harm the development for their upcoming new IP. I'm going to be talking about this uh, new IP later on in the video. So while I am disappointed that this game didn't get more staff to work on it, I'm glad that Monolith Soft is taking measures to make their unrevealed game as good as it can be. It still doesn't get a clean pass, but it's not completely bad. Also, don't play Future Connected without playing the main game first. Both of the smaller scale games in the Xenoblade Chronicles series are mostly extensions of the main game and contain spoilers for the main games. Kinda like the next game on my ranking, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Torna the Golden Country. The fact that I'm ranking this game in 4th place breaks my heart because I love this game, or DLC depending on how you buy it. It's a smaller scale game taking place 500 years before the events of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And it includes tons of spoilers for the main game, so I recommend playing this game after Chapter 7 in the main story. Aside from that, this game has a renovated combat system with beautiful music and a bunch of side quests to keep you invested for a long time. Also, this game has my favorite final boss in the entire Xenoblade series. Overall, this game is pretty awesome, however, it still isn't flawless. Side quests are required in order for you to progress in the main story, and that can get pretty annoying. It also doesn't help that this game is running on a less than optimal engine, causing unrendered textures. Actually, you're going to be hearing me talk about the game engine a lot from here, so I'd better explain what a game engine is. If you break it down the basics, a game engine is a bunch of program tools that help in uh, generating game performance and features. The part of the game engine that I'm going to be talking about the most is the graphics engine, because the engine used in this game and others in this series has gone through numerous iterations, and Torn of the Golden Country did use a different graphics engine than the main game, but it still didn't help much. Other than that, this game is super awesome, and you should buy it. But before you play that game, you need to play the next game on this list, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, the main game. 
There's also a high chance that Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was your first game that you've ever played. Me and this game have some history. I mean, this game is pretty much the reason that I bought a Nintendo Switch. It has everything that I love about a Xenoblade game. A massive and fantastic open world, great story, fun gameplay, and one of my favorite video game soundtracks of all time. I even like how the gameplay is based around the concepts of Blades, and I even like the anime art style. That being said, even though I like it, I really hope future installments into this series don't use this system. And this game definitely has its flaws. The first video on my channel I made was where I vent about all the things I hate about this game. Things like territorial Rotbart, the game be engine being all messed up, and how the female characters have ridiculous outfits, and yet I still love it. It's also impressive that this game came out on the, in the condition that it did. For all those who don't know, Monolith Soft, the studio who makes the Xenoblade games, is kind of Nintendo's right-hand studio. They provide support on almost all of Nintendo's games, Splatoon, Animal Crossing, Mario, and The Legend of Zelda. So when Breath of the Wild was in development, 50 of the 100 employees working at Monolith Soft were brought over to create the topographical design in Breath of the Wild. However, 10 of the remaining 50 employees were busy doing research on other projects. This left the remaining 40 employees to create Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Just for context, a game development staff can range from 20 employees on smaller projects to over 100 plus employees on larger projects, and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is a huge game. And while the game launched with some problems, the sheer truckload of updates and patches that have been released have sh has shown how much the developers cared about this game. Now if only someone had been brought on to fix the game engine. However, it doesn't look good when a game releases it with a whole bunch of problems, so you could imagine how it was for developers who couldn't do updates. They had to ship the game in the most tip-top shape they could possibly do, just like the original Xenoblade Chronicles. The, big re the biggest reason Future Connected was so disappointing for me was because it was attached to this awesome shining gem. This is the game that started it all, the game that set up the quirks and mechanics that have permeated into all the other games. The Nopon, auto attacks and arts, beautiful music, a giant and expansive open world that inspires my imagination, and if you're thinking that you can't play this game because the original Xenoblade Chronicles came out on the Wii, then allow me to direct your attention to Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition on the Nintendo Switch. Seriously, the Nintendo Switch should be renamed the Xenoblade console since there are four Xenoblade games on this thing. And of all the settings in the Xenoblade Chronicles series, this has to be the coolest one, taking place on the corpses of two dead titans. The mechanics merge together beautifully as well, and this game has my favorite mechanic in perhaps all of video games, the vision mechanic. Oh, and they finally fixed the game engine that made Xenoblade Chronicles 2 not load its textures. This is by far the best designed Xenoblade game in the series, in my opinion. I could go on for hours how every part of this game merges together in combat, but I know that I would be here for a while, and I know that you don't want to hear that, so I won't. However, despite all the praise that I'm throwing at this game, there is still one game in this series that I can't stop coming back to. Once upon a time, I was in a biology class with some friends. One of those friends asked me something. If you could uh, live in any sci-fi franchise, which one would you live in? It took me one millisecond to scream, Xenoblade Chronicles X! Yes, Xenoblade Chronicles X. Earth has been destroyed and now the last remainder of humanity is on the interstellar arc called the White Whale, a giant spaceship. Now humanity has crashed onto an alien planet known as Mira. Faced against overwhelming odds, the builders of a legacy after the destruction of Earth, or also known as Blade, must face a new threat, surviving on an alien world. Remember how I said something happened to make me throw out my old script? Well, this game is the reason why I did that. This game just won't leave my mind, despite how many problems it has. If I created a list of things I disliked about all the Xenoblade games, Xenoblade X would definitely have a bigger list than any of the other games. In fact, that game engine I haven't stopped talking about was developed for this game. So 
it has all of the unrendered textures, it has the bad load times, it's the worst selling Xenoblade game to date, and Tatsu food jokes galore. Okay, that last one isn't a game engine issue, but I know that people have a problem with it. But here's the thing, most of the stuff I brought up isn't Monolith Soft's fault. The fault falls on the Wii U. As most people know, the Wii U was a poorly marketed console, which led to poor sales of a, the console, and then the games on the Wii U sold poorly. So that didn't help with the sales of Xenoblade X, but it gets worse. It has been widely known that Nintendo likes to release low-powered consoles, and the Wii U amplifies this. If you look at the gameplay for this game, you can see how this is bad for Xenoblade X. This game deserves a better console to run off of, because it's a huge game that tries to do a whole lot of stuff with the Wii U. And the Wii U struggles to perform at all most of these things. Don't believe me? Well, here's a video of my Wii U trying to load an area after I tried to fast travel. It's because of this I believe Xenoblade Chronicles X deserves a port to the Nintendo Switch. This game is like a diamond in the rough, and the Xenoblade fandom is having a hard time getting their hands on it. Like I said, every other Xenoblade game is available on the Nintendo Switch, except for Xenoblade Chronicles X. And this is a real shame, because this game is awesome! While all the other games are driven by their story, Xenoblade X is based around exploration. Yes, there is a story to follow, but that part of it, the game isn't very important. I would say about 80% or more of the game is outside the main story. And this is where I'm going to go on a rant because we might not get a port of this game. Do you remember that new IP that I mentioned at the beginning of this video? Well, that new game is pretty important to what Monolith Soft has been working on. Right now, Monolith Soft has their hands tied with a bunch of large projects. It is known that they are working on the sequel to Breath of the Wild, and we know that they uh, couldn't spare any more employees for the development of Xenoblade Chronicles Future Connected. So we know that their hands are currently filled with big games, so porting a game as big as Xenoblade Chronicles X to the Nintendo Switch doesn't sound like it will happen anytime soon. And that is a real shame because people want this port to happen. I'm not kidding when I say that people are hunting down Wii U's just so they can play this game, and I can't count all the memes just focused on a hypothetical port of this game. But with the way things are going, that might not happen because Monolith Soft is really busy right now. Hopefully, once the new IP comes out, this game will get the same treatment as Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Hey, before this video ends, did you hear about Yasunori Mitsuda? It was recently shown that Yasunori Mitsuda is getting ready for a massive music recording. The thing is, Yasunori Mitsuda is the guy who composed the music for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. This has left many to speculate that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is secretly in development, but I have to disagree. There is very little chance that Monolith Soft has the manpower to be developing the new IP, Breath of the Wild 2 and Xenoblade Chronicles 3 at the same time. I personally think that Yasunori Matsuda is getting ready to record the music for the upcoming new IP. This could mean that we might get a reveal for this new game sometime this year. I have my fingers crossed for E3 2021, but we will have to wait and see. Or these images aren't for anything with Monolith Soft. We'll just have to wait and see. Here's something to think about. Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition and Mario 3D World have been ported to the Switch. One of the big selling points of these games is how they come with additional content that functions as a separate game. For the Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, we got Future Connected, and for Mario 3D World, we got Bowser's Fury. So after the new IP comes out, and we hopefully get a port of Xenoblade Chronicles X, do you think we will get another experience coming with it like Future Connected? And if that does happen, what do you think it will be? Or would you rather get a Xenoblade X2? Leave what you think in the comments, and while you're down there, please tell me how you would rank these games. And if you like this video, you should subscribe. I have a whole bunch of Xenoblade stuff planned in the future, and I can't wait to make it. Anyways, thanks for tuning into the network, 
Yes, that is a new outro that I probably won't use again, and bye. I'm going to go play some more Xenoblade Chronicles X.